Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, a quick practical video. We're going to look at installing the LEMP stack. So Linux, Nginx, MySQL, and PHP. It's an incredibly popular software stack and it's used to serve dynamic web applications. We're going to use the canonical example of WordPress to get this set up. Uh, we'll do that in the next video. But you can use this as the base for a tremendous amount of applications if you want to run them on your own server. Uh, a huge number of, like a, just a massive percentage of web applications are Linux, MySQL, Apache, or Nginx, and PHP. It's a useful skill to have. Some of you might ask, why Nginx over Apache? Well, I think if you already have Apache knowledge, then it's excellent for some situations. However, I think if you're new to dealing with web servers, Nginx is the way to go. It's just unbelievably performant. It can handle unbelievable amounts of load. Um, it's amazing to use as a proxy, as a caching server, as all kinds of things. It's an incredibly powerful tool, and if you're going to spend some time learning a new tool, I think it should be Nginx. The other thing is, we're using WordPress as an example in PHP and MySQL applications. However, Nginx is an even better choice if you're going to be serving static content, just because it's so incredibly good at serving static content. So I think this is sort of a one size fits almost all the applications that most people will ever need from running like private servers. Okay, that being said, let's get right into it. We've got the Linux part covered. I'm already running a Linux VM here, so we can just go ahead and get right into installing Nginx, MySQL, and PHP. So obviously, app get update, and then install Nginx. This is going to be up and running by default, I think, so. Nginx is running, and if you do a that stat, you can also see uh, we should have port 80 open now. So there it is. We are, in fact, serving some sort of website. I'm not sure what kind of website yet, but it's probably just a default page. So, uh, well, let's actually just check it out. So if we type in localhost, there we go. Welcome to Nginx. You can see Nginx is running and working. Uh, let's see where this file is. So where's it actually finding this HTML file that it's showing us? Okay, so let's just kind of troubleshoot our way there. Uh, there's obviously an easy answer, but it's uh, an opportunity to practice. Okay, so um, we know Nginx is running, and we can just say list etc Nginx, right, because that's going to be the configuration uh, directory. So what is in here? Oh god, all this stuff. But in general, you can see nginx conf. Whenever you see something like that, the program name dot conf, you can pretty much assume that this is like the highest level configuration. So this is generally where you start when you're looking to configure something. In general in Linux you'll have in etc the sort of main configuration file. If you see a configuration directory with more specific configurations, these would override this one. And then further down, you know, in individual, let's say virtual hosts or whatever, um, those things would override this. And then at the very last, obviously, when you uh, pass parameters to a program when you run it, so when you run it with command line arguments, those arguments obviously overrule everything. So let's just take a look at this. User, the user it runs as, www data. How many processes, where the PID file is going to be, the process file. Some basic settings that are going to be sort of propagated out to your individual sites, unless they are overruled in those individual sites. Virtual hosts, obviously individual virtual hosts. So it'll look in conf D for those specific configurations, or we can see it also includes this directory. So why don't we look in there. Um, we'll actually say sites available at default because this is the actual file, not the link to it. And what do we have here? We've got the config file. 
So this should have a path to where this file actually is. And you see the root, so the site root, is in user share nginx html. And it's going to be looking for an index file of some kind, something called index, something called index.html, or something called index.htm. Now, if you're running a PHP site, your site will have its own configuration that's a little bit different, and you might also here be looking for an index.php file. But we'll get to that. Okay, so now we sort of know where this actual HTML file might be. So it's user share nginx HTML. User share nginx HTML. Let's see what's in there. Here we go. Okay, a 500 page so where when there's an error, this gets thrown. And an index page. Hallelujah. Here it is. This is the index page that we were seeing here. So there you go. We have set up Nginx and we have found the index page. Meanwhile, you've also seen the main Nginx configuration directory, the confd directory where individual site configurations can be stored, and the most common place to store site configurations, which is etc nginx sites available. Let me just show you the last thing because you'll see this a lot. List etc nginx sites uh, enabled and list uh, long listing. What you can see here is you have sites available and sites enabled. The files in Sites Enabled generally have the same name as the ones in Sites Available, but they're just links to the Sites Available directory. What that means is this is the actual configuration file for the default site in this path, but this Sites Enabled directory is there so that um, you can very quickly make a link. So activating and deactivating sites is very easy because Let's say you want to turn off this site, you simply remove this file, you remove the link in here. And the actual configuration file is still hanging out very safely in sites available. Apache does this too, it's just a clever way of having configuration files and then links to them, and that's the, uh, the way to turn on and off sites. Okay, I think that's enough for the first video. You have Nginx set up, you could host things, if you stuck a website, in, what is it, user share nginx html. If you just stuck a website in here, it would be rendered like a regular website, uh, and it would be rendered insanely fast by nginx. In the next video, we're gonna deal with installing uh, MySQL and PHP. Those are fairly fast, and I'm not gonna get too deeply into each of them. We're just gonna sort of get them set up. If you become a database admin, there's nothing I can tell you to prepare you for that anyway, so for the hell that is null values and databases, no, we're just going to sort of get them set up for what you'll need to know as a very beginning sysadmin, so how to set up MySQL and PHP, and that's in the next video. Okay, there you go, you've just set up a web server. Congratulations. It's sort of awesome. It's the first really practical, useful thing that you can now have your family bug you about doing for them, like set up my website. There you go. Obviously, um, you're going to need to learn a little bit about how web servers work and how configuration works and how security works before I would encourage you to go do this on the actual web. But uh, for when you do, now you can basically set up a web server on a VPS. I'll see you in the next video.